Hi, good night. I am trying to set up a live stream. So if you can hear me, just leave a comment in the chat section so I can know that it's working now. Awesome. Okay, great. So we are going to begin. So I see Riyadh and I see Nisha and I see Natalia and Philip. Hello. All right, so we're going to do a little revision, but this revision is mostly map work related questions. All right, so here's our first question. I tried to put it on a little slideshow so it can work for all of us. Again, this is my first time, so you know, we'll see how it works out. First one, a scale of one to 10,000 on a map would indicate that, so we have the options. A, the map is 10,000 times larger than the ground it represents, B, one unit on the map represents 10,000 units on the ground. One centimeter on the map represents 10,000 meters on the ground. Or D, one centimeter on the map represents 10,000 kilometers on the ground. What would be your answer? Okay, so on maps in terms of scales, um, if it does not give you a unit of measurement just like this, it's just like a ratio. So it's basically telling you what one unit represents one place and what the other units is equal to on the other place. So one unit on the map represents 10,000 units on the ground. So your answer in that case would have been B. Hello, checkmate. Um, for the next one, the settlement pattern at X. So we are seeing X right here. If you notice, you can see this stretch here, which looks like a roadway. And you are seeing settlement on both sides, these, these little dots here. Are representing settlement right on both sides and the road is running through the middle so it is suggesting that it is a linear settlement so settlement patterns there's dispersed which means scattered or you're spread out all over the place linear which just like the word suggests it is in a line or nucleated means that it is very clustered or it is compact or the houses are close together. So in this case, we are seeing where they are in the formation of a line. So we would say that that is a linear pattern. Linear patterns usually occur along areas such as a roadway, such as a river, etc. So those are the areas where it is usually. Um, dispersed settlement patterns. These are usually in areas where you have hilly areas or 
for some reason, persons are not settling in that area. So the houses are far from each other. So if it's a place where there is a lot of hills or there is a swamp or something to that effect, the settlement patterns would have been very dispersed. They would have been far away from each other. For nucleated settlement, no. Um, you can look at residential areas. The houses are close to each other. They are a little more compact, not much space in between, and they are not in one straight line. They are beside, behind, in front of each other. So that would have been your nucleated pattern. So our answer for B, or answer for five, sorry, just like Riyadh and MB said, is letter C. For six on this page, which of the following best describe the stretch of coastline? So the coastline is at this area, right along here. And we have three options. One, it is straight. Two, it is sandy. Or three, northwest to southeast trending. So that is basically telling you what direction it is running in. So. Stretch of the coastline, one, it is straight. Yes, the coastline in this case looks straight. Two, it is sandy. So this is the symbol for sand. So we're seeing all the dots here, which is suggesting that it is sandy. And third, northwest to southeast trending. So if we were to draw a north-south line right here, north-south, and then we draw our east-west line right here, we would realize that this line is basically, this line is basically a south-east line. Right here, it would have been southeast, but it is coming from a northwesterly direction. So this would have been your northwest and this would have been your southeast. So it's basically running across your compass. So it is also northwest to southeast trending. So that is all three. So for number six, our answer would have been letter D. All right, I'm seeing that you're not seeing the letter, the number, the answers on this one. Sorry. All right, on this one here, it is Island X population distribution. Number 11, which of the following areas has the highest population density? So population density is basically, basically talking about the number of persons in an area, in a specific area. So we have several areas on the map here and they are numbered. The dots, each dot is representing 100 persons. So in this little area here at number one, we can see the amount of persons that are in that specific area. So we could say that the population here is dense because we have a lot of persons in a very small space. Whereas in another area like here at eight, we can say that the population is not dense because you don't have a lot of persons in all of this area here. So the question says, which of the following areas has the highest population density? So it gives you option one, which is here, four, which is up here, five here, and six down here. Let me see if anybody placed an answer. All right, I'm seeing a lot of A's, very good. So it is A that is for one. For 12, which area is most likely to be rugged and mountainous? So 
Again, when we were explaining before, we were talking about settlement patterns. We said that in some areas, for example, mountainous areas, a lot of persons are not living there simply because of the terrain. So if we were to look on this one and we are to guess which area would have been rugged and mountainous, it would have been an area that does not have a lot of persons settling there. So it would have been a dispersed settlement. So in this area, eight, we notice that there are no settlements right in the middle here. It is actually a round. So one here, one here, 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 and it's on the outskirts. Then at three, we have more persons in between. Seven, lots of persons there, and eight. So our answer for number 12 would have been letter D. All right, I think we're following. If you're following, just type a comment or type in an answer or something so that I, I know that you're good and you understand. If you don't understand, you can ask a question and I will explain. All right, so we are at the next section here. I noticed that someone was misinterpreting um, population distribution with population density. Think of density as um, an area just being compact, lots of people standing there. Density has to do with the small space specifically. So it's the amount of persons that you have in a small area. Distribution now is basically how they are spread out across an area. So it's not so much of how many persons are there, but how they are set up. Okay. All right. Um, so we are here. This one is a little hard to see. So for one, what is the grid reference of point P? So P is up here. For grid reference, you have four figure grid reference and you have six figure grid reference. So in order to find the six figure grid reference, you have to know how to find four figure grid reference. For four figure grid reference, I always use a capital letter L. So when you're writing capital letter L, usually, you start from the top like this, you come down and you go across. So that would have been your L from the top and then you go across. I think you might be hearing my puppy, that is Skittles. Um, so down and across, that would have been your letter L. So for four figure good reference, I always use the letter L, but it is capital L around the specific grid that I am looking for, around the specific grid that I want something in. So in this case, my letter L would start from here. So it means I would read this line first. So that is 95. When we look down here, we're seeing the 95, right? So it is here. And then across here, my other one would have been 30. So I have 95 and 30, that would give me my four-figure grid reference. So I can look at my answers and see which options give me 95 and 30. So I have, that's for the four-figure. So I have C and I have D, 95, 30 in both of them. So now I need to look at the ones that I'm given for the six-figure, the other two numbers, to see which one is it that is my correct answer, whether it is C or D. I see somebody's complaining about my puppy. <laughs> All right. So for P here, this is where we are for the four figure. We already have 95 and 30. So we just need to see which one is the correct one. So let's look at C first. We have 95, then four. Uh, another thing that 
I notice a lot of students make mistake on when they have the 95 for this section here, sometimes they don't know which number to put next. So they may put the number that is going up rather than going across. So remember that this 95 line is going down. So whatever other number that you're putting beside it would have been the number that is going down just the same. Right? So just from estimating, this looks like about seven because you'd have eight and nine here. Um, so the four would certainly be out. I'm hoping that you already know how to do the six-figure grid reference in each grid square. Some teachers do it differently. For some, you are cutting up the box using nine lines, which would give you 10 spaces. Or some teachers may ask you to use a ruler to do your measurement. You can just let me know which one your teacher uses. But for my students, I usually have them just cut up the box. If you cut up the box enough, when you're doing an exam like this, you don't even need to cut up the box because you can just look at the options that are there and you know what your answer is. So I already know what the answer is for this one. I know that it can't be 95 and then 4 because it's not close enough to the section for 4. So it certainly would have been 7 here. And then 30 and another 7 at the top. So the answer for this one would have been letter D. Let's do the next one. Two, the straight line distance in kilometers between the church and the railway station is. So we look for the church, which is up here, and we see the railway station. So how we do straight line distance, you get a strip of paper, you place it along your area that you're measuring. So we would have placed our paper from here at the church, to here at the railway station. We mark off the church, mark off the railway station. Then we take up our strip of paper and we place it along our scale. I find that some students make mistakes with scales like this, just the same, where instead of realizing that the one is here, they start counting and thinking that this is zero. But if you notice there's one here, this box is already cut up for you in meters. And then you start at the zero, one, and two. So after you've taken off your strip of paper from here, you would place it along your scale. You can start at zero. I would suggest you start at zero so that you don't make a mistake. Or if you start at one, you just have to count it as zero, one, two, three. So you place your paper along here at zero and then you mark off your measurement. Um, since you're doing it on the computer now, you can take your strip of paper, you can still place it across here, you can mark it off on the strip of paper on the computer just the same using a pencil, and then you place it along your scale. So I'm going to do that right now as well. All right, so I have my answer. Let me see if anyone has theirs. No. No one has an answer. So the answer is 2.8 kilometers. That is letter B for number two. Number three, in which direction is the arrow on the map pointing? So the arrow is here. What direction is the arrow pointing in? So the arrow is pointed down in this area. Once it is down, it is south something. So you would draw your north-south line right here at the base of the arrow. And then you go across and draw your east-west line. 
And then from that, you can determine what it is. So we can already do some amount of elimination based on just by looking at it. So we know that it is on the eastern side and we know that it is towards the south. So B would have been out, certainly. So it can be southeast or east southeast. South southeast would have been a little further down. So based on my calculations, the answer for three would have been letter A. For number four, man-made feature running south to west through P is... Oh, you can't see the paper. My apologies. Um, maybe we can try another one. Let's see if this one is a little better. Are you seeing this one? Just let me know before I start going through it. All right, I get three yes and one no. Okay. Jelisa, maybe you can make it full screen so that maybe you can see it that way. You can try that. So let's look at this one since at least three persons can see it. What is the contour interval used on the map? So we see contour interval a whole lot on the past papers. Interval is basically talking about the measurement in between or the number in between. So on this map, we are seeing 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Sometimes as well, well, this would have been for paper two, but sometimes on paper two, when they give you the actual map, the key section would tell you what the contour interval is. It is represented as VI. It says vertical interval, and then they would show you the number beside it. So if it was a paper tool, you would not have to try to figure it out. But for this one, once you look at the difference between two of the contour lines, then you would be able to see what the contour interval is. So for this one specifically, contour interval used on the map would have been B, which is 100 feet. For two, in which of the following direction does Boot River flow? So we have Boot River here. To find out the direction in which a river is flowing, you have to find the mouth. Once you find the mouth, at least you know where the river is ending. So you are able to follow the river to see where the river is coming from. So, Boot River is here. We have Northwest. It is not flowing up, so the two north would have been out. There is southwest, and then there is southeast. So west would have been over this side. If the river was flowing to this side, then it would have been west. It is flowing to this side, so it is east, and it is flowing towards the south. So it would have been southeast for number two.
Number three, what settlement pattern is shown in the grid square labeled A? So this is the grid square labeled A. We are seeing a road stretching across here. And we are seeing the buildings. If you look at the key, you will see the symbol for buildings. The buildings are right here and they are stretched out along the roadway. So for that one, it would have been linear as well. So, so far we've probably seen two or maybe three settlement pattern questions. So these are questions that you can expect on your exam. So for three, it would have been letter A. This one, what is the six figure grid reference of point P? So I'm going to just leave this one up. This one is very clear and watch for your answers. No answers yet. I uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if the stream will be up after. I said earlier that it is my first time, so maybe if I figure out how to put it up after, then I will leave it up. I'll try. All right, so I'm seeing Nisha saying D. So Nisha, you can see the paper now. That's great. Uh, Six-figure grid reference of point P. P is right here. Using capital letter L again. So our first one would have been 59 that we have there. So we have two options, B and option D. And then across here would have been 19. So we only have one option. So the only option that has 59 and 19 would have been option D. So we don't even have to go any further. So, good job. So Nisha got it right, Checkmate got it right, and MBBM got it right. And uh, interesting name, one subscriber before 2021. All right, you also got it right. Great, good job. So the bearing of point P from point, I'm assuming that should have been A, is approximately. So bearing of P from A, first we find out our starting point. It said from point A, so it means that we are at point A. And we are doing bearing, so yes, our answer is in degrees. We would draw our north-south line at point A. Then we would draw another line to connect point A to point P. And then we would have done our measurement using our protractor. But this is a computer screen. We don't have any protractors. Just think of it as, as, as an exam where we need to do this really, really quickly. How do we guess our answer, basically, from the options that were given? Okay? So... Would A be your answer? A is 25 degrees. Is that possibly your answer? No. A would not be your answer because A would have been too close to north and north is zero degrees. And that's not where we are starting from. Remember that we're starting from point A going down to P. Next one is 132 degrees. So remember that south would have been 180 degrees. Our north-south line would have been here. So we would have passed 180 degrees. So B would also be out. 
And then for C, we have 196 degrees, which is suggesting that it is quite close to south, but not as but not as far as going towards the east. And then the other option would have been 312, which shows that it is about northwest, somewhere up there. So, um, so for number two, just from looking at the options and using the process of elimination, our answer would have been C. Good job. I'm sure you can't see this one either. All right, so when I'm, um, for the next live stream that I try to do, I will try to just put up an actual paper that will give you a better picture quality. Maybe you can see this one. Maybe we can try going through this one. If you can see this one, just let me know so that I can actually start going through it. So the last question, MBBM got it right. Nice. Nisha got it right again. And then Checkmate got it right. Good job, guys. Can you see this one? All right, so Riyadh says he can't see it. Okay. Checkmate can see it. That's good. So we have one for yes and one for no. Somebody else responds so I know if we should move on or uh, kind of miss. All right. <laughs> okay. So for kind of, we will work with kind of. Um, four, in the diagram above, the feature labeled one is A. All right, so we have mouth, tributary, confluence, or distributary. So mouth is the general term for where the river is exiting into the sea or into a larger water body. Tributary would have been a smaller a smaller river that joins into a larger river and then confluence is the point where the smaller river joins the larger river so so far none of those are your answers we are left with distributary by the way this feature that we are seeing in the diagram what is it just comment that for me, please, and tell me what kind of feature it is. So for this one, our answer would have been D, which is distributary. All right, let's go to the next one. Five, on the diagram above, the landforms shown at X and Y respectively are, and we should give the answer for those. Still waiting on a response for the feature that is formed at the end of the river there. No response yet, so we'll just continue until somebody answers it. Um, X here, we're seeing the C right at the corner here. And then at the sea level, it is zero degrees. Not zero degrees, I'm sorry. It is zero meters above sea level because you're at sea level. So this would have been zero. Then there is a relatively flat area long enough before you actually get to 50 so this area because we are beside the coast and because this is a flat area we say that it is a coastal plain right here 
So, so far we have letter B and letter D as our options because they are the only two that have coastal plain in it. And then for Y up here, we have another flat area that extends for a wide period. So it's a flat topped hill. For that one, it would have been a plateau. It could not be a round topped hill because it would need to have a smaller peak. This is a plateau because it is very wide and it is very flat. So our answer for number five would have been letter B. Let me see if anyone responded to the feature. Nobody? That's a delta. All right, so that is a delta. When the, when the materials from the river at the mouth stretches out and it creates a, like a fan, a large wide area of deposition, it's like a fan that is created at the mouth of the river that is called a delta. Okay? Let's move on. So we are at number eight on this one. The feature labeled S is situated in what grid square? So for this one, it is four figure grid. Um, I think four figure grid is one of the, probably the easiest map work topic. Um, I'm sure you're all good at four figure grid reference. So for this one, I want you to tell me the answer. Um, you can use my method. Or you can use your teacher's method, depending on what your teacher uses. So I always use a capital letter L. So here and here. So what would have been our answer for number eight? Feature labeled S. What grid square is it in? Checkmate is on a roll. Good job. And Devon Reed. Welcome, Devon. Okay, good job. So, yes, it is C. So, using our capital letter L, we would go down, that is 93, and across, that is 27. So, 93, 27 would have been letter C. And number nine, the feature passing through Q is, Q is right here. The feature that is passing through, if you don't always know what these things represent, remember that's what your key is for. So you come over here and it looks like our railway. So the answer for number nine would have been letter D. All right, I'm seeing the responses coming in. Some of them are a little late. Nine is D. Jonty says, hello, Jonty. And Zoe says D as well. Um, Crossdale says C. Which one are you answering, Crossdale? Uh, and I have D again from subscriber. Okay. Good job, guys. So we are now on to this one. So for the for your paper ones, you will get map work. You will get graphs, charts, etc. There's another video that I did that speaks specifically to how you can do well on the multiple choice past paper question that we're expecting for this specific exam year. So you can check out that video if you have not watched it yet. Um, I think it's 10 tips. Yes, there are 10 tips that will help you to answer your multiple choice questions. So they range from how to do elimination, specific words that you need to look for in the question, um, what you can expect what you can expect in 
in the multiple choice, how it is set up, etc. So you you should you should look at that if you have not seen it yet. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please ensure that you subscribe. That is why I'm having so much problems with the live stream now because um I can't do a live stream from my cell phone unless I'm at a thousand subscribers. So I'm at 500 and something, I think. 500 and probably 10. So this is this is problematic. Anyway, so if you haven't subscribed, you can go and subscribe now. So for this question, item 67 referred to the following graph, which shows long-term changes in global temperatures over the last two centuries. Six says, what degree of change in global temperatures was recorded between 1910 and 1940? So this is 1990. So this one would have been 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940. So it is basically asking you from here to here, what degree of change took place? How do we tell the degree of change? We look on this side here. So where we started at 1910, this is 13.5. Um, so, and this is 14. So in between here, we're looking at probably 13.67. So 13.7. For 1910, and then for 1940, it stops specifically on the 14 line. So we have 13.7 and 14, so that is 0.3 when we minus. So that is the difference between the two. So the degree of change would have been letter B, which is 0 0.3. For number seven, I think somebody put that answer. Six is B. Yeah, good job. Um, hello, Joe Mo something name. Jojo Mojo. Okay. Um seven. The largest change in the annual mean global temperatures occurred over the period of so they gave us some periods, 1890 to 1910. So we have 1890 to 1910. That's the first option here. 1920 to 1940, 20 to 40. That's the second option. 1970 to 1990, 1970 to 1990 is here. And 1980 to 2000. So the greatest change is actually right here. That is from 1970 to 1990. Let me see if somebody had that correct. Number seven. Number seven is letter C. Uh, Crossdale didn't understand number six. So checkmate is correct for number seven is letter C. Number six. Uh, Crossdale. Degree of change. Once it is talking about changes, it's talking about the difference between two things in the global temperatures between the two areas, between the two years. So you have 1910, which is right here, to 1940. So all you're going to do when you get a question like this, use your pen or pencil or whatever. Um, look from this line all the way over to here. Write down that number. And look for the next number, 1910 was, yeah, 1910, draw over to here, and then you find out what this measures. So there is no specific measurement there, but you can guess. So this is 13.5. So if you skip two boxes, that's 13.6, 13.7, 13.8, 13.9, 13.10, 13.11. Which would have taken you to the 14. So that is why right here would have been 13.7. So then you would have minus the 13.7 from the 14, and that would give you 0.3 for your answer. 
that's how we ended up with letter B. So you can let me know if you understand, okay? Um, this is our next question. I feel like you won't be able to see that one. All right, let me know if you're seeing this one. All right, Crossdale is not seeing it. Anyone else? Um, checkmate says kind of. Again, um, I'll try to do an actual paper next time or try to make the quality better somehow. Um, kind of new at it. Not kind of. Very new at it. It's my first time. So we're just seeing how it works. And then we'll make things better from now on. Okay? So, since you can kind of see it, I'll just go through it just the same. Which of the following features best explain why the urban center in the sketch map above is located at Y? So, this is Y right here. The question is asking you, why is the urban center where it is? If you're building a, if you're building a new town, I don't know if you guys play Sims. That's a that's a game, or you play Little Big City. But when I am teaching, I would use those games with my students to basically help them to build a city of their own. So for map work, when you're building your city, you would choose to put specific things at specific places because of the benefits that it would provide. So in this specific case, it is asking, why would you put the city where you have it? So what are the things that are in front of the city or beside the city? Why we would want to put it there? Where do you guys live, by the way? Not your address, just your country or your city. So you can type that in the comment section so I can see, so I can try to use your, your area as a reference or as examples so you can easily understand that is if i know your area all right so here if you're building a city you want to ensure that the land is flat well you want to try to have flat land for wherever you are living you may notice that your city areas have flat land it is usually very flat. Okay, so I'm seeing Guyana, Guyana, La Brea. I don't know where that is. Tell me the country, please, Crossdale. So flat land, the presence of flat land would certainly be an option here. Two, if you're building a city um, or an urban area, another option is the nearness to the mountain would you be would you would that be something that you're thinking about would you care about how near you are to a mountain why so i'm seeing saint vincent and the grenadines zoe nice all right so nearness of the mountains would not necessarily be something that we're thinking about so so far we have one as an option so we have a b and D as options that we're looking at. And we're taking out two. 
So we don't have D anymore. We don't have A anymore. So we end up with C, it looks like. But let's look at three just the same. The presence of a natural harbor. So we can see, based on the shape of the coastline here, this is a nice little bay, a little sheltered area for your city. So if you have a natural harbor, it means certain things for your city. It means that, one, you have an open communication channel. You can get, you can do export, you can do trading, you have the option of exchanging things with different areas, with different countries. So it is a prime area or a prime piece of property for you to have an urban area. And since we're all... Yeah, Caribbean, Guyana, St. Vincent, Trinidad, Antigua. Um, if you think back to the days of slavery, plantation, sugarcane, whatever, you would realize that all of these were done at the coastline because of the trading opportunities that it presented. So being done at the coastline there is a Beautiful place to put a city. So that is why we would be choosing these options. So we have one, which is the presence of flat land, and three, the presence of a natural harbor. So one and three, that would give us, wait, yeah, we would have letter B for our answer. So 52 would have been B. For 53, in which direction is the urban center most likely to expand? So, we have the urban center here. Which direction would you expand your city into? I'm going to wait for you to answer this one. Just to ensure that you understand. So, over here we have the mangroves, the swampy areas. And behind here, Blue Ridge, which is our mountain. And then over here, it's not a mountain. We still have road. We have space. Where would you extend your urban center into? So the options are east, west, north, or south. All right, I'm already seeing an answer that says A, which is east. That is from Caleb. Good job. And Jalissa says A as well. You are both correct. Nice. Give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. Okay. What is the grid reference for the trigonometrical station at Gun Hill? So this is a map of Falmouth. Falmouth is in Trelawney in Jamaica. Where is Gun Hill? I don't see Gun Hill. All right, here's what I'm going to do since I can't find it. And this can happen to you in an exam, just the same. If you are given something that you can't find and they gave you the grid references, you can try to look for it. So there is 3157. Oh, here it is. So 3157, it means it would have been in this area. 3157 again. It can be 57 anything because remember that for grid reference, we are going with the capital letter L, so we're going down and then we're going across. So it is in this grid square here. So it is right here, Trig Station. So right here would have been Gun Hill. What is the grid reference? So we have 3157 already. It's just for us to figure out which other two numbers we're going to use to get the six figure. So 31, and then we're going across here. This looks like about zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then 
57 going up is 1. Wow, this is very close. So for this one, I would say it is letter A. So remember that you're starting at 0. So based on the size of your grid, you would know what your space would be. So maybe this is about 0, then 1, then 2. So the, the trig station would fall in the 2. So we have for this one 31, 2, 57, 1. So that would have been letter A for number 1 there. Yes, guys, A is correct. Um, if I'm saving the recording afterwards, if I figure out how to do so, I will. Um, again, first time, but I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to save it once it doesn't slip away or something like that. So once I'm done, I will just try to save it. If it doesn't work, then we move forward and try another time and learn from the mistake. Okay. All right. Um, two, straight line distance between the trig station at Gun Hill and the road junction at Rock. So trig station, we found it already. It is here. Road junction. can't find it. Oh, I see. Rock. Right here. So I'm doing these with you as I go along. I don't have the answers pre-prepared. I'm just doing them as we go along. So I have the trig station here and then the road junction here right at rock. So you can't use the word rock. You have to use a specific junction where the two roads join right here. Um, so what is the straight line distance between the two? They're asking for the answer in miles. So you're going to use the miles section of your scale. To do this, again, you would just take a strip of paper, place it along here to here, mark off this section, mark off this section. Since we're doing it on a computer, how I normally do it from um, soft copy material, I would just place my paper on my screen just the same. Mark it off just like I would do it on a normal map and then I place it on my scale to see what my answer is. So the miles scale is up here, zero starts here. Um, if we were to just look at it and estimate from here to all the way over here, looks like about four to me. Let me try to actually do it. Yeah, I was right. It's it's over three three and a half, so I would give it for four miles. So for two, I would say it is letter C. Number three, what is What is the direction of the trig station at Gun Hill from the junction at Rock? So, direction from Rock. So, our starting point would have been at Rock here. We would have, we would have drawn our north-south line here. And then we would have connected the two points. So, already we can see that it is heading towards the west. But it is closer towards the southern section. So just a guess, um, I would say D, west, southwest, just from looking at it. Yeah, west, southwest.
If you have any questions, you can let me know. All right, this one. Items 10 to 12 refers to the following world map. What is the location of St. Petersburg? So this is absolute location, latitude and longitude. St. Petersburg is here. All right, so we can see that it is 60 degrees we have to figure out if it is north or south so once you see that where the zero line zero degree line is if it is above the zero degree line it is north if it is below the zero degree line it is south so this is 60 degrees north based on where it is located so we already have we already have a out B out. So we have C and D as our options. So it is on 30 degrees east line. How well it's written there, but just in case you get a question where it is not written, again you would look for the zero degree line and you just state whether it is on the western side of the zero degree line or on the western side over here, sorry, or on the eastern side of the zero degree line. So we would have 60 degrees north and 30 degrees east. So our answer for this one would have been letter C. All right, then we have number 11. The direction of the prime meridian from New Orleans is. So we have New Orleans here, and the prime meridian would have been this one. So the direction of New Orleans from, oh, come again, hold on. The direction of the prime meridian, right from New Orleans. So we're starting from New Orleans to see what direction the prime meridian is in. So it is in this direction. So the prime meridian would have been east of New Orleans. Let me know if you understand that one. It can be a little tricky sometimes. So number 11 would ha have been letter A. All right, I'm seeing an A from Gabidon. I'm assuming that you are giving me the correct answer for number 11, so good job. We will move on to number 12 once we all understand. Yeah, I'm seeing A, so that means we're good. All right, so number 12. What time is it in New Orleans when it is 10 p.m. on Monday in St. Petersburg? So, what time is it here? when it is 10 p.m. on Monday over here. How do we figure that out? First of all, it is two different hemispheres. Um, I see a no miss from Crossdale. I'm not sure what you're saying, which one, which is it that you don't understand the one before, before I get into the calculating time. All right, Crossdale, you can tell me later and then we may go back. So, what time is it in New Orleans when it is 10 p.m. on Monday over here? So, New Orleans is over here, which is on the western side. Um, St. Petersburg is over here, which is on the eastern side. So, we are at 90 degrees west and then we are at, uh, what is this, uh, 30 degrees east. So there are two ways for you to do the calculating time. You can do the number line just by knowing which direction you need to go into. Or you can actually calculate it based on knowing that 15 degrees equal one hour, etc. So 
Let's go with the number line first. So these are our lines, but you must notice that the interval here is not 15, it is 30. Usually, remember that um, you sometimes you would see 15 degree intervals because the 15 degree equal the one hour. But if you don't and you see 30 degree intervals, it means that between each of them, it is two hours. That's all. So, 10 p.m. here, and we want to find out the time in New Orleans, which is over here. So, we would have been heading in the westerly direction. So, we would have been minusing hours. So, we are at 10 p.m. here. Remember, it's two hours because it is 30. So, 10 then 9, then 8, wait, it is 10 p.m., and it is on Monday. So 10 p.m., 9 p.m., 8 p.m., 7 p.m., 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 4 p.m., 3 p.m., 2 p.m. So that would have been 2 p.m. So I have A, 2 p.m. on Monday or C, 2 p.m. on Sunday. So it is 2 p.m. on Monday. So we didn't change the day. So this was 10 p.m. in the night on Monday night. And then we minus our time and we went back to 2 p.m. Monday evening, just the same. So our answer for 12 would have been letter A. Um, good. So Crossdale is good. Can I explain the calculations? Which one are the calculations for time? Time calculation. So we just did the one for the number line. So I will, um, explain the one for using the hours. Camille can't see anything. I'm sorry, Camille. We'll try to make things a little better next time around when we try this again. Um, So, for calculations, Riyadh, we're at 30 degrees east here, and over here is 90 degrees west. We want to find out the difference in terms of degrees between the two places. So, because it is two different hemispheres, what we're going to be doing is actually adding them. If it was on the same hemisphere, we would have minus. So we have 90 plus 30. That's 120 degrees between here, right? 120 degrees, we divide that by 15 because 15 degrees equal to one hour. 120 divided by 15, I don't know how much that is. Um, let's see. Let me find a pencil. Probably nine. Just guessing. One twenty divided by fifteen. Eight. Okay. So one twenty divided by fifteen is eight hours. So it means that we need to, we have eight hours difference between St. Petersburg and New Orleans. So we are at St. Petersburg and we are going in a westerly direction. It means we are minus in time. So from the 10 p.m. at St. Petersburg, we're going to take away eight hours, which is going to still take us which is going to give us the time at New Orleans. So we can do it on our fingers then. Um, 10 p.m. at St. Petersburg, we're taking away eight hours. We have nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So when you get to the eight hours, it would give you the 2 p.m. just the same on a Monday. So that's the other side of the calculation. Yeah. Okay, good. So somebody was helping me out. Gabidon. Um, let me know now if you get it, Riyadh. So that is the other way for you to do the calculating time. Um, that long way comes in handy when you are calculating time and you want to get 
minutes as well. So you may get some questions where they ask you to calculate time and then they have minutes involved. Using the number line alone would not give you the answer. Unless, yeah, it can, but it will take a lot more thinking. But knowing how to work it out will actually make it easy for you once minutes are involved. So if you're good, just let me know. Send a thumbs up or good or something. For the other persons who just came on, again, if you have not subscribed, please do so. So that next time when we're trying to do a live stream, it is not so tedious and stressing and people can't see things and you know so just ensure that you subscribe um let's try to go to the other question i'm hoping that you understand calculating time i noticed that a lot of students they either hate it or they just can't get it but i'm hoping that you get it all right so we are here Item 13 refers to the following diagram which shows a coastline. Which of the following features is not shown on the diagram? Which one is not shown? So it says cliff. Are you seeing a cliff? Headland, Bayhead Beach, or a wave cut platform? Which one are you not seeing? So we have one extension here that is giving us a sheltered area here and then another extension here so this area that is extended here well both areas extended on both sides they give us a sheltered bay area and then we can see the sand in there so that gives us our bayhead beach how the Bayhead Beach is normally work, it is that you have high enough land on both sides of it that shelters the bay. So that would have been our headlands or our cliff. So it gives us A, it gives us B, and it also gives us C in this diagram already. What we are not seeing though is a wave cut platform. So for 13, our answer would have been letter D. All right, I'm seeing Camille asking, how do you calculate bearings to degrees? You have 60 minutes in one hour. And one hour is similar to 15 degrees. So that means that four degrees is equal to one minute. So if you were to if you were to divide 60 by the 15, that's a 60 minutes by the 15 degrees, you would have gotten four. So that is how you would have gotten your that is how you would have gotten your minutes. All right, um, so for number 13, our answer would have been letter D. 14, item 14 refers to the following contour sketch map. Contours in meters showing points X and W and area Y. The bearing of X from W is approximately. All right, so bearing of X from W. So if we're from W, it means we're drawing our north-south line here. And then we're connecting our two points. This is already stretching towards the north on the western side. So just from using our brains again, it can't possibly be 45. 45 degrees is... Um, synonymous to north northeast. Um, 135 degrees would have also been on the eastern side. 225 degrees would have been closer towards the southern side. So our answer for 14 would have been 315 degrees, which is letter D.
Good job, guys. I'm seeing 14 for letter D. Nice. Item 7 to 8 refer to the following map. Um, which of the following types of settlement will most likely develop between points Y and Z? So we have Y here and we have Z here. You can see the contour lines on both sides. So we see that we have hills on both sides. So again, if you're building a settlement, how would your people be set out? Where would they settle? Would they go and live on the hilltop? Would they live, would they just spread out across the area? Or in this case, since we can see the road that is stretching around the hill here, where do you think they would live? What type of settlement will most likely develop between Y and Z? So these areas here, we have 50 degrees, 100, not degrees, sorry, 50 meters, 100 meters, 150. And then we have all along the road here. So it would seem as if they would settle along the road. So that would give us a linear pattern. So for seven, it would have been letter C. Good job, Gabidon. Um, for eight, the type of farming system most likely to exist at A is, so for A here, notice that these lines, based on the key, it says estate boundaries. So from here, hear the word estate, a peasant farmer will not have an estate. Um, so small farming or subsistence farming is certainly out. And the amount of space that is here, it is already suggesting that this is a large area that is being used for the farming and it is for commercial purposes. So this one would have been A, which is large scale commercial. Number nine refers to the following map. The position of Houston is, so Houston is right here. Again, in order to figure out whether it is north or south, we have to find the zero degree line or to see how the numbers are increasing to know where the zero degree line would have been positioned. So we have 30, then it goes up to 50, then it goes up to 70. So we can tell that the zero degree line would have been below Houston. So that means Houston is towards the north. Um, Houston is not specifically on the 30 line either. So 30 degrees north would not have been our answer where D is. It would have been 32 degrees north. And then 30 degrees south would have been out. 32 degrees south would have been out. So it is looking like letter C. And just to check the other section. This is 80 degrees west, and then this is 100 degrees west. So in between here, right at the half section here, would have been 90. And then here would have been 95, which is basically a quarter of it. So our answer for C Our answer for nine, sorry, would have been letter C. I'm seeing somebody saying D. Um, just look that D has 100 degrees east. So we are at the western side. So we're moving from 80 to 100 to 120. So we are at the western side, which is suggesting that zero degree would have been over here. So over this side would have been the east. So our answer for that one is letter C. Um, 10 now. It is 10 p.m. on Monday in a Caribbean city located at 77 degrees west. Mm -hmm. What is the standard time in Lagos, Nigeria, which is five degrees east? 
So in this question, we have two separate hemispheres just the same. We have 77 degrees west and we have 5 degrees east. And we are supposed to find out the time, what is the standard time, at 5 degrees east. So we are at the west. We're heading towards the east. Eastern time is usually ahead. So that means whatever hours we have, we would have been adding it. So 77 plus 5, that is 82. All right, so with 82 degrees, we need to find out um, how many hours we are working with. Um, 15, 15 times 5 would have given us 75. So we have 5 hours. Let's see. Yeah, we have five hours. So the 82 minus the 75 would have given us seven degrees extra. So five hours, 10 p.m., we're going ahead. So 10 p.m., we're adding time. So we add 5 hours to 10 p.m. That would give us, hold on, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. It would be 3 p.m., 3 in the morning on Tuesday. Let me know if you get that one. Because I was just working it out while, while I am talking to you. So for 10, it is 3 a.m. on Tuesday. Good, good, yeah. Awesome. So we can go on to the next one. Items 13 to 15 refer to the following map of crustal plates. 13, the plate labeled Y is known as... Do we know this plate? Well, if you don't, if you can't remember them, just find your own island in here and you will know that your own island is on the Caribbean plate. Once you figure out where the Caribbean is, then it is easier for you to figure out everything else that is around the Caribbean. So we know that at X here, that would have been the Caribbean plate. So for number 13, B would have already been out. We know that American plate is above the Caribbean plate here. So A would also be out. And we know about Cocos, right? Close, close towards the Caribbean. So we can just already know that this would have been letter C, which is the Cocos plate. Number 14. Which of the following term or terms describe the northern boundary of plate X? So this is plate X, boundary to the north here. So we can look at the small arrows. So we can see right here that they are moving apart. So that would have been divergent right here. Also towards the north, we have this arrow moving in the westerly direction. But this one is moving into the easterly direction. So we are seeing some amount of transform plate going on there as well. So we have divergent and we have transform. So our answer for C would have been 2 and 3. That's at the northern boundary here. So our answer is letter C. Number 15. The eastern boundary of plate X is characterized by plate X, eastern boundary here. All right, how can we tell? Right at the eastern boundary here, we 
we have active volcanoes. We have ocean trench. But no lava plateaus. So we would have one and two only. So that would have been one and two only. That would have been letter B for number 15. Good job, Gabidon. Number 43, let me know if you're able to see this one. Um, let me tell me if you can see this one. I'll try to find another one that is a little more visible. No responses if we can see this one. All right, so checkmate can see it. Item 43 refers to the following table, which shows sugar production in the Caribbean and Latin America between 1961 and 2001. So 43, based on the data in the table above, which of the following statements are true about sugar production? between 1961 and 2001. So it is all of here. One, sugar production in St. Kitts declined. Let's find St. Kitts, four, two, three, two, one. Yes, it declined. Um, so one is in. So that means letter C is out. Two, sugar production in Cuba remained above 30. Cuba. That is correct as well. So one and two is in. All right. So that means B is out, C is out. So it's either A or D. Three, sugar production in Barbados decreased by over 50%. Barbados, 14, 500, yes. So, um... 1, 2, and 3. So for 43, it would have been letter D. 44. Most capital cities in the Caribbean have coastal locations mainly because... Um, Gabidon says miss, but it declined, then increased. That is correct. But over the period between 1961 and 2001, when you look at the grand scheme of things there is a reduction. There is a big decline from 419 to one, 188. 44. Most capital cities in the Caribbean have coastal locations, mainly because they began as major ports, were important fishing towns, began as important tourist resorts, or they were sites for international airports. So that would have been A. Remember earlier when we spoke about um, from slavery days, how most of our cities would have been close to the coastal areas because they would have used that area for docking ships and exporting and picking up goods, etc. So for 44, it would have been letter A. 45, which of the following are problems associated with urbanization in the Caribbean? Uh, one, decentralization of shopping facilities. Two, unemployment. Unemployment and underemployment. Three, poor public transport. Problems associated with urbanization. Um... Well, poor public transport, we are certainly sure of. So that would have been B, C, and D. Unemployment and underemployment as well is very, very high in the urban areas. So we're also sure of two. Decentralization of shopping facilities, possibly.
but not necessarily. It depends. It depends on the city that you are in. To be honest, um, depends on how big your your specific city is as well. Um, so I'm going to go with two and three only because we are very sure of those. So for two and three only, that would have been letter C. All right, this is going to be our last one for this session. Items 10 to 11 refer to the following map. Point Y is located at, um, Y is here. Y is located at 11 degrees north. So A and B are our options. And 13, 14 degrees east. So it would have been B, um, 11 degrees north here and 13 degrees and 30 degrees east. So it would have been letter B for number 10. Number 11. The bearing of the trig station from the church bearing of the trig station from the church is approximately so trig station from the church so that means our starting point is over here we draw our north south line all right so it is greater than 90 degrees can be 340 because 340 would have been on the other side so we would go with 140 which would have been letter c so 11 is letter c uh number 12 features shown at x we cannot see unfortunately um 13 which of the following features found out why we can't see why properly either it looks like a it looks like a beachy area we can see the water here i'm assuming so x may be a cliff because it looks a little dark as if you'd be on top of a cliff here possibly but we don't want to be guessing and then why looks like a wave cut platform um based on what we can see from the dark so that would have been our last one for this session we do have some more um we can work on them at another time i want to thank you for joining i know it was a little rocky maybe not a little maybe a lot um because it's, you know, it's our first time. So I'm sure that next time we will be a little better because at least we would know what's happening. We would know what to do. I am also going to try to save this so you can see it after. I think maybe two or three persons asked for it to be done earlier. Um, yeah. If you have any questions before I go, you can ask. Uh, that's the question. When again? Um, I don't know yet. I'm going to try. I'll, I'll try for tomorrow. I know that your exam is probably your first exam. It's very, very soon. July, what is it? 15, I think. So I will try to do at least two, three, four more live before. So you can get to ask me questions and I can get to explain. So at least you get some amount of understanding. Um, so I ensure that you subscribe and you turn the notifications on. So as soon as I start the live, you will get a notification so that you can come on. What I will try to do as well, I will try to schedule it 
so that, okay, exam is the 15th. Good. I will try to schedule it so that you will see when it is, so that you know when to prepare for it. Also, I have a Instagram page, Natken Educational Services, just the same. I will post it there so that you can also see it when the next one will be and the time, etc. So that I can set it up properly so we don't have any, we don't, well, we don't have so many problems. Um, we can't say we won't have any problems because, you know, we don't know what will happen. You are welcome, Mohammed. Thank you for joining. It is my pleasure. I enjoy helping you. All right. If there are no other questions, enjoy your night, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome again. One subscri Tell you what, one subscriber before 2021, I am going to look for you and I'm going to subscribe to your channel just so that you have one subscriber before 20, okay? And I also hope you get a one in geography. Um, miss do paper two for 2013. Why would we do paper two right now? Because you're not getting paper two on your exams. Are you... Mm, All right, I'll try to I'll try to see what I can do for the 2013. Good night. Enjoy your night and thanks again for watching.